progress. It is a fundamental attribute that all humans thrive for. Without it, history would become rendered null. Progress is the ultimate end goal in taking a stand. San Juan, Puerto Rico, 1923. Luisa Capetillo, a major feminist leader who defied social norms and was the first woman to wear pants on the island, heads to a meeting of the Puerto Rican Feminist League. Here, the major feminist leaders of the island will meet as they do once or twice per month to discuss issues of discrimination and the rise of female recognition on a national scale. The League was only one of many factors that helped lead to the construction of a complex machine in the early 20th century. A machine with the aim of acquiring female suffrage for the women of Puerto Rico. A machine powered by the very women of the island and those who advocated for their inalienable equality. The people of Puerto Rico lived under Spanish rule from the early 16th century up until the late 19th century. During this time, the women of the island faced gender inequality, a cultural legacy that can be traced to Spanish chauvinistic society. This social status for women continued even after the United States took control of Puerto Rico following the Spanish-American War in 1898. Eventually, the women of the island were able to make strides in bettering their social condition in relation to men. In the early 20th century, the women of Puerto Rico, through various acts of defiance, united in a lengthy struggle in order to acquire female suffrage rights and climbed the ladder toward ultimate gender equality. Many motives led women in Puerto Rican society to advocate for women's suffrage. The desire to gain women's voting rights stemmed predominantly from female inferiority in Puerto Rican society, which traced back to social standards in Spanish culture. Women were nothing more than mere house servants meant to adjust to the needs of men and their children. Many articles of the Spanish constitution, which dictated the rules of colonial government, demonstrated how the female vote was inconceivable in this era. Political representation in government was also non-existent for women. Chauvinistic views inherited from Spanish cultural traditions remained with the island for years to come. However, during this time, women began to question their inferior social, political, and economic status in relation to their male counterparts in their ever-modernizing society. Women began to question things such as unrealistic beauty standards, not being able to vote, get a formal education, work outside of what was considered domestic chores, walk around alone, and at times, select their marriage partners. Without the right to vote, women could not demand their rights. I don't understand why men believe that they have rights over women. This has been allowed by society. Better said, we as women have tolerated it because of the perceived idea that we are the weak gender. We must change this ideology. We must transform these customs. This precisely illustrates the mentality that women fought to change in Puerto Rico during this time. They were tired of being degraded and not being able to voice their opinions through their political leaders. As a result, they took initiative in order to spread female empowerment and acquire further gender equality. Though the negative views toward Puerto Rican women did not cease with the overthrow of Spanish rule on the island, the introduction of American culture provided hopeful feminists with newfound inspiration to pursue their equality. Although Puerto Rican women had gained the right to education and few work opportunities in traditional roles such as teaching, the right to vote was still lacking. When the island of Puerto Rico became a U.S. territory following the Spanish-American War of 1898, the women of the country were finally exposed to a different culture. They became inspired by a nation whose women were also fighting for equality, which was something the women of Puerto Rico had resented not having for centuries. The women of the island soon learned that their desire for equal rights was not isolated, as there began to be a worldwide development of suffragist movements not just in the United States, but also in Finland, Norway, New Zealand, and even Argentina. In 1919, the United States of America passed the 19th Amendment, giving their women the right to vote. The U.S. Department of the Interior ruled that since Puerto Rico was merely a territory of the United States, this amendment did not apply there. Despite this ruling, the fact that American women had gained the right to vote insinuated that suffrage for Puerto Rican women was a tangible idea, invigorating the fight toward political empowerment. Puerto Rican women thus began to organize the feminist movement on the island. La Liga Feminia Puerto Riqueña creada en mayo de 1917, determinó no solo buscar el derecho al voto para la mujer, sino también decidió que ya era hora de que la mujer se insertara dentro del país, dentro de la problemática del país, y ya era hora que la mujer demostrara que podía ser un agente de cambio social y que además su participación dentro de la problemática social del país era importante. Y decidieron escoger un tema problema para demostrar esto. However, 
it soon became evident that not all women shared a common vision for the future of female suffrage. The movement became divided, with some believing that the right to vote was a right deserved by all. This would result in the disillusionment of uneducated women who aspired to vote at last. In 1917, Ana Roque de Dupre created the Liga Femenina Puertorriqueña with Isabel Andrew de Aguilar as vice president. This league advocated for women's voting rights on the island and presented the Senate with a document soliciting this idea. In 1921, the league changed its name to Liga Social Sufragista and began to focus on giving women the right to obtain political positions as well. They held weekly meetings in which they found different ways to fund the movement and gain recognition. Furthermore, they found ways to reach the government. One way was by creating groups to target different political parties, while keeping themselves informed of any news or events. The Liga Social Sufragista went as far as handing out flyers, house by house and town by town, in order to gain followers for their cause. Eventually, the League's focus shifted to universal suffrage, so those who believed that only educated women over the age of 21 should be able to vote began to leave the League. One of these women was Ana Roque de Dupre, who left in 1924 and went on to form the Asociación Puertorriqueña de Mujeres Sufragistas the following year with the more conservative suffragists. In 1929, these women reached their ultimate goal when the government granted the educated woman of the island the right to vote. However, the fight did not end there. Those who were striving for universal suffrage did not give up until their goals were met. Notable leaders at the time such as Luisa Capetillo, Juana Colón, Hena Rapagán, and Emilia Hernández all continued to work toward universal suffrage as opposed to merely educated ones. They formed various unions, confronted influential figures on a political scale, and wrote books, poems, and other forms of media in order to further their cause. Through their political activism, they were able to finally accomplish what they were fighting to achieve. In the end, complete female suffrage became a reality. In 1935, universal suffrage was finally granted in Puerto Rico. This meant that all women, regardless of educational background, had the right to vote. The struggle for women's suffrage on the island was a long and hard one and essentially opened the doors to fight for overall gender equality. The fight for female suffrage had a long-lasting legacy in Puerto Rican society. The women of the time set the groundwork for Puerto Rican females as equal citizens. The right to vote paved the way for increased opportunities for women, both socially and economically. It soon became acceptable for women to occupy higher job positions, including those in politics. Evident in the 1946 election of Felisa Rincón de Gautier as the first female mayor and Sila Maria Calderón as the first female governor of Puerto Rico in 2001. In addition, women's social participation has also increased. For example, the enrollment of females at the Mayagüez campus of the University of Puerto Rico was 48% in 2015. This is a remarkable feat, considering the fact that this campus is well known as an institution for engineering which includes fields that had typically been viewed as male only. One can infer how accessible social and educational opportunities have become for women as a result of their struggle for equality. This increase in gender equality on the educational front further reflects the wide range of workplace opportunities for women, as well as their increased integration and further recognition in Puerto Rican society. Even though major strides have been made, the women's struggle for equality is still greatly underway, not only on the island of Puerto Rico, but all over the world. On January 21, 2017, more than one million women worldwide, including Puerto Rican women, came together for the women's rights protest, showing that the fight had not stopped. Many protested for reproductive rights, gender equality, economic opportunity, and respect. Overall, the suffrage movement in Puerto Rico demonstrated that taking a stand opened the doors for women in their continuous fight for female equality. By going against the mindset of the time, the suffragist movement demonstrated that change can be possible, such as by improving working and social conditions. The women of Puerto Rico not only gained the right for themselves to vote, but they contributed to an effort to improve women's social conditions. Their efforts were not in vain, for like the leaders of any successful movement, their various struggles ultimately resulted in the betterment of the view of females on the island. They fought, they persevered, and they left a better world for generations to come.